So, thank you for the introduction. My name is Anne Christine Hesse. I'm from the Technical University in Braunschweig. And I'm going to talk about the fatigue strength of beam welded joints um, as back joints. When we look at uh, the geometry of um, beam welded joints in comparison to arc welded joints, so arc welded joints are usually the ones you would use um, like outside when you build a bridge or something which would be on the left side, um, then we see that uh, the geometries differ significantly. Um, on the right side, there is one example for a beam welded joint. Um, when we talk about beam welding, it's um, usually either laser beam welding or electron beam welding. Those welds um, typically have a relatively small weld width, and um, the weld reinforcements, for example, are also um, smaller than joints. Um, both types of joints, um, or the geometry of both types of joints, are um, standardized. Um, there's one standard concerning uh, arc weldments and another standard concerning uh, beam weldments, and both standards have quality levels. Um, for certain imperfections of those joints, and um, with the quality level B being the best um, quality, and uh, the quality level D being the worst quality. Um, when we talk about uh, the fatigue strength of uh, those joints, um, often the nominal stress concept is used, um, and we have standards concerning this uh, stress concept, for example, the IAW recommendations are part of the Euro code. Um, and another point that we know is that the fatigue strength is significantly influenced by geometrical parameters. That's why we did fatigue testing on the beam welded joints, because the standards we usually know are based on arc welded joints. Okay, the basic procedure was to weld the specimen, then um, to get information about the specimen geometry, I'll, I'll tell uh, how we did that. Then we um, did fatigue testing to determine SN curves, and in the end, we wanted to have a correlation between the imperfections that are shown in the standards and um, FAT classes that we got from the fatigue testing. Um, this has been already done for arc welded joints. Um, here, there's an IRW um, standard on that, but it hasn't been done for beam welded joints. So um, what we basically did, we tested those kind of specimen. Um, we used two different uh, steel grades, the S355 and the S960. We used three sheet thicknesses, two welding processes, on the one hand disc laser beam welding, and on the other hand electron beam welding. And um, we introduced um, imperfections. The main imperfection we used was the actual misalignment. So we intended either to have no axial misalignment or to have 15% of the sheet thickness, which would be the maximum value of the axial misalignment that is allowed um, in quality level C, according to the standard. Um, here you can see uh, one example for um, the welds we produced. Um, on the left hand side, there is the, the disc laser weld um, made from S355 and 6 millimeters sheet thickness. And on the right hand side, we have the electron beam weld at the bottom, you see so the results of some hardness measurements. As we can see, the weld joint gets rather hard in comparison to the base material. It is mainly due to the reason that we don't use any filler materials when we um, do beam welding. Um, for the weld geometry characterization, we use the laser triangulation sensor. You can see the setup here on the right. And uh, we determined the axial misalignment, the angular misalignment, um, excessive weld metal, as it is called in the standards, excessive penetration, incompletely filled, grooved, or concavity. Um, we measured three paths on um, the top and the bottom of the surfaces um, of the samples. Um, here are this one part of the results. Um, as an example for the axial misalignment, here on the bottom you see all um, the SN curves we determined. And um, in this diagram, we have basically the left part is for the sheet thickness of 3 millimeters, the middle part is for the sheet thickness of 6 millimeters, and the right part is for the sheet thickness of 10 millimeters. Um, 
and we see the different quality level marked here and when we intended to have no axial misalignment um, then we see we are rather close to that um, target. Of course, sometimes you get axial misalignment simply due to the fact that um, the base metal sheets have some kind of distortion um, before welding, for example. Um, when we intended to target the maximum value within uh, quality level C, we see that we also have some scatter reaching from the quality level C, but also some samples that uh, fall within the quality level D. Um, Within the quality level B, we see that we are rather on the good side when we intended to be there. Um, so for our personal characterization uh, within, within that research project, we um, used an additional quality level, we called it B half, because it was half of the maximum value that would be allowed for quality level B. Um, I'm not going to show you all of the imperfections. You simply have to believe me if I say that the majority of the samples fell into that quality level we have. For the fatigue testing, um, we use constant amplitude loading, the stress ratio of 0.1. Uh, the failure criterion was at the breakage of our samples, or a load cycle number of 5 million. And um, we did uh, two things to get um, our SN curves. On one hand, we did linear regression and calculated the slope, which you can see here with the bold line. And on the other hand, we also um, used a fixed slope because that is usually assumed in the standard fixed slope of three, um, which ran through the center of gravity. And if you compare those um, two kinds of regressions for um, one set of data, as, as it is shown here, you see that at two million node cycles, when um, the slope is higher than three, um, the results for the calculated slope are higher than the results for um, the fixed slope of three. So you have to keep that in mind when comparing the results. Um, for the fatigue tests, I'm not going to show you all of the SN curves, but rather um, the stress ranges are two million load cycles. Um, we did a mean stress transformation from 0.1 to 0.5 because 0.5 is uh, the value that the standards refer to. Um, we assumed a mean stress sensitivity of 0.3, which is reduced between um, the stress uh, stress ratio uh, of 0 and um, between and uh, 0.5 to a third. So actually it was 0.1, and um, we used the uniform scatter band. Um, now we can uh, compare our results to the. Um, values that are given in the standards for our credit specimen, and um, those are called the FAT values, and uh, FAT, the FAT value of 80 would um, be for, an, for a bat weld that is welded from the upper and from the top and the bottom side, and um, the FAT value of 71 would um, refer to a specimen that is only welded from one side, as our samples were. And we see in every case we reach that FAT value of 80, independent of the fact whether we use the calculated slope on the left side or the fixed slope on the right side. And um, yeah, that's the first part of the result. The second part of the results were the samples with axial misalignment. Um, the usual used standards don't give any recommendations because the, the axial misalignment we used is higher than um, allowed in those standards. But we have the recommendations um, in the IRW guidelines, which say if you are within that quality level C, they would recommend a FAT 63 for arc welded joints. Um, we see that we nearly reach that FAT 63 in all cases, only in one case, in one case we didn't reach that FAT value. Um, there are two reasons for that. On the one hand, we used interlayer sheets while testing, so you, and our samples were rather small compared to the actual geometries you would have when you build something. Um, so we introduced the torque within the weld scene here. Um, that is, could be one reason why we don't reach that fat value. The other reason could be the fact that we had some scatter and some of the samples simply lay within, not within the quality level C as a talent, but already in the quality level E, which, um, would have another fat value. 
but if you want to be sure um, for being well adjoined, we would recommend to use the fund value of 56. Okay, um, we did additional not stress calculations to cover imperfections. We um, haven't had any samples we tested. Um, we used a reference radius of 0.3 according to German standard. Um, and we did that basically with two steps. The first step was uh, to verify the numerical model of what the experiments we already did. And in the second step, we did the calculations for the further imperfections. And um, we used all the imperfections you can see on the left hand side and um, found recommendations for the maximum usable fatigue class. Um, when you can show that your samples are within those quality levels um, that we just, um, yeah. Uh, we also uh, used the quality level that we invented that we have quality level. I come to my conclusion. Um, looking at the geometry, um, we saw that if we didn't intend it otherwise, we mostly fell into quality level B according to the other standard for being well in joints. Um, we even were so good that we um, implemented an additional quality level. Um, for the fatigue tests, we didn't saw any influence of uh, the base material we used. Um, we didn't saw any influence of the three sheets thicknesses we used, and concerning the welding processes, um, we reached comparable um, geometries which led to comparable, comparable results in fatigue strength. Um, we found some recommendations for fatigue values which of course have to be checked um, from other people as well, um, but those were in dependence on the quality levels um, of the other standard. So, yeah. thank you. Thank you.